Hello my friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Cassie. Today is the sequel to the Brutus Monroe Homeroom Glow card kit. I did an unboxing the other day and I will have that link down below if you happen to miss it, but let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and stamped out all of the images onto some alcohol marker cardstock. This is by Brutus Monroe. I stamped all those out and went ahead and colored those ahead of time while I was watching TV. It's just one of those easy things I do. I used the Arteza colored pencils to do so. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. I also stamped out the little notebook paper a couple of times and I'm just going to trim that down using my guillotine trimmer right along the line. Remember this is a pretty big stamp and so it will cover almost the entire front of an A2 size card. So I didn't want to really leave too much space around that notebook paper. And plus I want to use the die that came in this kit on this. So I'm going to show you. What you're going to want to do is you're going to line it up right along the edge and it doesn't matter which side you decide to do, I'll show you both. And I'm going to just tape this down using a little bit of purple tape. Any little low tack tape would probably work. And then I'll grab my die plates and uh, just do the sandwich, get that sandwich all ready to go for whatever your machine is. I have a Gemini. So I'm going to get those plates ready to go and I'm going to set this on there and then the cutting plate, which I should have flipped it, but it really doesn't, it didn't hurt either plate. Um, the cutting plate is you're only going to go halfway. So whatever that cutting plate covers is what's going to cut. And then there you're going to see that's the first side. I'm going to show you the other side as well. I love that this die is like it packs two for one, uh, which is fabulous. So I'll put it in there again and we'll do the exact same thing, making sure that my plate only covers what I want to, it to cut. And so take a look at that. That die cut both of those out. Is that not super cool? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start working on our first card. I'm going to pull out the Orange Glow. This is the neon ink that came in the kit, the Electro Pop by Rena Kay. I'm going to stamp out just a few little of the elements that came on this stamp set. And, you know, my limited knowledge these days of any sort of algebra or anything like that, trigonometry, you name it, <laughs> I am sure this makes absolutely zero sense. But then again, to a lot of us, this probably isn't going to make a lot of sense um, because, yeah, it's a whole, you know, whole nother thing. And yeah, I homeschooled my kids, but I can't remember any of this. <laughs> so I'm just sticking down letters and no one's really going to care about that. So don't worry that you have to have an actual equation on there. Just stamp down stuff and have a good time with it, which is all I am doing. All right, once we're done with that background stamping, I am going to grab one of the little neon papers that came in the kit and I'm going to stamp my sentiment across the top using some Raven Detail ink. And I like that, just passing you a note. Is that not awesome? And then I'm gonna use my guillotine trimmer to trim down my sentiment. I pretty much do the same thing for almost all the cards. Just stamp it and then use the guillotine trimmer to trim things out. And then I decide the uh, paper that I had cut for my background just need a little something more. And this is like a neon green. And I've trimmed it down to be the whole front of an A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm taking the stencil that came in the kit. And, you know, all y'all schooled me in what this is actually called. It's like a, it reminds you all of the composition books, but I'm going to be real honest with you here. I don't remember ever using the composition books. I think I always wanted to, but I never paid much attention to them because I never used them in high school or college for that matter. Uh, so, yeah, that's... That's my limited knowledge on that. I did clean off the stencil, but for some reason that neon green color that I have, it kind of stained the, the stencil a little bit. So it's fine. Don't worry about that. I'm not hurting it with my purple here as well. And so yes, as you notice, I am pulling in other Electropop colors. I just happened to buy those because those just went so perfect with this kit. But it does come with the one color. Now we're going to pop this down on top of our card panel. And I love just that little bit of the composition book stencil popping through. And I like how I have some of it just on that upper corner and that lower right hand corner. I covered the back of my owl with some uh, foam tape and then I'm going to pop him down. And then I'm going to peel off the release paper on all those and also on my sentiment. And I'm going to stick that down just using my tea ruler trying to get that one as straight as possible. And then I'll peel off the release paper on this second part of the sentiment. The sentiment is all one piece, but I did trim it down just using that guillotine trimmer so that I could fit it on there a little bit better. I do like that there's enough spacing that it's easy to do that. And then I'm going to grab my card base and we're going to do just a little bit on the inside. You know, I got to do something. So I'm going to stamp out that sentiment that says you're A+. <laughs> Fabulous. 
and then I'll grab the little pencil and the eraser that I have stamped and colored. And yes, I fussy cut all of those out. I know that some of you are like, I can't believe you did that. But to be real with you, I don't mind it. I sit and do that while I'm watching videos or coloring, or not coloring, but um, watching TV or whatever the case may be, or watching my husband play his video game. So yeah, it's easy. All right, and then I'll just glue that down to the front of my card base, and that's gonna finish off our first card. So much fun. For card number two, we're gonna use one of the foilables, and the color that I've got is deep blue. That's my foil. And so to start off, I've already cut this down to fit the whole front of that panel. Those panels are four and a half inches, or yeah, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I'm just sweeping those off just to get off any dust particles. And then I'm gonna use a piece of copy paper and stick that in between that copy paper. And then I'm gonna pull out my Amazon Basics laminator. This has been heating up for about 30 minutes or so just to make sure it's nice and hot. And I actually like to run mine through my laminator three, four times sometimes, just depending, and I'll turn it and flip it just to make sure that it's good and heated and um, ready to go. So I don't peel any of it back in between because if you do that, then you just, you're not gonna get the results you need. So once it's good to go, I'm gonna slowly peel this back and you'll see that it releases the foil onto that laser printed area and it looks so cool, love that. All right, now that we're done with that, we're gonna move on to kind of fixing the panel. I am going to use one of the pattern papers and run that through my die cutting machine with the circle foundations die. And then I'll stamp out my sentiment onto some white cardstock and trim that down. And then we'll start adhering all of our pieces to the front of our panel. Using some liquid glue, I'll, I'll adhere down the circle. And then I'm gonna use foam tape on my sentiment. And I'm also gonna use foam tape on my little bird. I'm gonna use my T ruler to make sure that I get it on there fairly straight. And then I'll peel off all the release paper on my bird. And we'll stick her down on the front too. And then I am going to just put a few of the little elements that I have, glue those down on the inside of the card. Kind of trying to stick with that same color theme there. And it's just something, it's not real crazy, but it's a little something to have on the inside. And then I'll use that liquid glue to adhere down our panel to our card base. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I'm gonna grab out the chroma foil, or chroma foil, chroma glaze that came in the neon green. And when it comes out, it comes out very opaque and light, but it does darken up and it becomes a little bit more transparent. You'll see that in the end and that final picture, but it's really, really pretty. So there is our final card. I love number two. This looks cute too. That little bird is adorable. Moving on to card number three, I had already taken one of those foilable backgrounds and I had sponged Raging Red Electro Pop Neon Ink all over that. Um, my lockers in junior high were like this orange red color, so that's what I went with. And then um, I really do like how that looks. Originally I thought to just go with the steel color, but I'm happy with how that one turned out. And I've just picked out a few images that I know I'm gonna put on the front. I wanna use some of this mirror card that came in the card kit. And I say mirror card, it doesn't like reflect you, but it gives you the impression like it's a mirror. And I wanna put this on the inside of the locker. I just, I never had a mirror in my locker, uh, but I know a lot of my friends did. And so this just, I don't know, just told me, I, I just felt like it had to be on the inside. So I'm taking an X-Acto knife or a straight edge knife and I am just cutting three sides of one of the lockers, just trying to make sure that I can get that to open and I am successful. You could do it with all of them if you really, really wanted to, or you could just do it with a couple or just the one like I did. And then I'm gonna put this into my uh, score buddy and just score that one edge so that I don't tear it when I try to open it and it's got a nice crisp edge to help with the opening. And I'm gonna take some more of the pattern paper and cut this down to be the full front panel of my card. And so in doing so, I realize I do need to trim down my foilable a little bit more. So I'm gonna cut all the way around the locker, just taking off that extra bit of paper. So originally this was not supposed to be a shaker, so there are gonna be some mishaps and I'll show you and I do sort of fix it. Um, but yeah, this wasn't supposed to originally be a shaker. I'm not sure where it turned and why I did it differently, but we do go with a shaker. I cut down some of that mirror card and I ended up making it, <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. It wasn't entirely uh, perfect sized, so I'm just gonna glue that onto the locker door and it does hang off the top, so we're just gonna trim that down. And it doesn't even go all the way to the edge, but it doesn't really bother me because it's just the inside part. 
And so I'll trim the excess off. And then it's at this point that I realize I'm going to make this a shaker. Well, what I should have done was taken my acetate and adhered it. But I didn't. I wasn't even thinking of the acetate because it wasn't my thought process to originally make this a shaker card. So what we've done is we doubled up our foam tape. This is the Brutus Monroe foam tape. And I'm just going to put this beautifully all over that background. And I'm even going to use some Doris skinny strips around the uh, one side edge because it's real skinny in that area. So it makes sense. And so um, I just want to make sure that I don't have anything that's going to, or there isn't going to be any sag in the card. So I, I'm trying to be really good about making sure that that entire back is covered with foam tape. And you'll see it here. And it's at this point that I realized I needed to put the acetate on first. But I didn't do that. Thankfully, I had left enough of an edge on the inside that I could use a little bit of liquid glue and trim down my acetate to fit in there perfectly. I mean, and it fits in there just perfectly. So I've just got a little bit of a lip in there, so I'm going to put some liquid glue in there. But just learn from me. Think it through at first and make sure that you grab that acetate because <laughs> otherwise it just would have been an open well. <laughs> And that would have been, I don't know, we could have figured something out with it, but it certainly wouldn't have been a shaker. So I'm using my pick to make sure that I have that in there nice and tight. And then I've peeled off all of the release paper. I'm going to take some of those neon sequins and put those up in that upper left hand corner where the open locker is going to be. Make sure that I've got those pretty liberal in there. And then I will adhere down my lockers to the front of that. And I love it. It's a shaker with all those little neon sequins. All right, you'll notice that my card front is actually basically done. I thought my camera was rolling. Turns out it wasn't. So I adhered down a sentiment and all the other little school pieces. And there's even something on the inside of the locker as well. I'm going to take some more of that mirror card and just put that on the inside of my card base just to make it look like, you know, kind of like the inside of the locker. Even though, like I said, it's not going to reflect your face. It just gives you the impression of it. So now we'll take some of that liquid glue, adhere that to the panel, and adhere that panel to the card base, and there we have our shaker. So I really am happy with how this turned out. Even though there was some mishaps, we did figure it out, and I'm happy with the end result. So love that one too. All right, for card number four, I know y'all are gonna think I am super crazy, but I fussy cut out a bunch of those little elements from the pattern paper that was in there. So I grabbed three pattern papers and I took about half of each of the sheets and um, trimmed those down, fussy cut all those little images out and kind of adhered, not adhered yet, but kind of placed them out on the front of my slimline card that I'm making here. And of course, Max is saying hi, he wants those pieces of paper so, so bad. And I'm just happy he's in here coming to say hello. I know a lot of you have asked where they have been, and so there is Max. Miles is off probably tearing something up. All right, so back to the card. Like I said, I had fussy cut all these images out, and I know that seems a little bit crazy, but I don't mind doing that. I'll just have on some music, or I might even be sitting in front of the TV just listening to whatever and just fussy cutting. It just doesn't bother me. With the right tools, you can do just about anything, and I feel like the end result was absolutely worth it. I'm adhering those down to one of the neon green panels. I cut that down to be slimline, so it's about three and a half inches by, I think it's three and a half, by eight and a half. I know it's eight and a half lengthwise, uh, but it could be three and a, or no, maybe it's three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. That could be what it is. Um, but I trimmed that down, and then I used the stencil over the top, using that screaming green once again through that stencil, and I just think that background is just super, super fun. But yeah, we'll just continue to glue all the little pieces down. And when we're done, we'll have this beautiful panel. Now that that's all done, the next thing I want to do is I want to attach some of that plastic neon cord that we have. So I'm going to pull out all three pieces that I have, and I'm going to trim those down so that they will wrap around the top and the bottom. And I can adhere those to the front of the card. They don't add a lot of bulk, especially if you adhere them correctly. And when I say correctly, I mean kind of flat, because it does have a flat edge. Um, so that's a way to do it. I'm going to flip over my panel and trim off all of the excess that's hanging off. I like having pieces hang off. It just gives the impression that there's more going on outside the card. And I'll show you. These are the pieces that I cut apart. I only used half a sheet. And then we're going to use the Slimline Collection base 
these are fantastic because I already cut down to seven inches by eight and a half inches and then you just have to score them at three and a half inches so you got your base already good to go so there we go so now that the base is all ready I'm gonna actually adhere that cord to my card or my card panel and I'm gonna do this using some half inch score tape you could probably use a little less you know a little smaller size if you wanted but to do this I'm going to wrap it around from the top down to the bottom and then just wrap it around the back and that stays pretty well when you use that score tape I'm going to make sure that it stays put by putting another piece over the top of that because to adhere this down to the front of my card base I want to make sure that I uh, have that back pretty well covered and liquid glue I could do it with that but this just is a little bit easier way now I've never been very good when I do do this uh, about making it straight on the card base but we did okay <laughs> we did okay all right so uh, now I'm just gonna adhere that down to the base and I'm gonna have a little bit of white border on that left hand side but yeah I like how that looks we're gonna put some foam tape on the back of our sentiment which I had already hit stamped and cut out and then we'll peel off our release paper this will be another way to hold that cord down rather than trying to do it with some liquid glue so if I put that foam tape right over the top it is going to hold our cord down in you know just one more spot which is kind of nice and I thought about adding some sequins to the front of this but I already realized there was quite a bit going on on this front so we're gonna leave it at that and then on the inside I had so many leftover pieces I had plenty to choose from so I just grabbed out several and just started sticking them down using liquid glue and it's fun I'm just putting them in the upper right hand corner and then I'm gonna put uh, several down in the lower left hand corner kinda going with that rule of odds I think yeah I did five up there and then I think we'll do about five down here at the bottom but I had plenty of little leftover pieces which was no big deal and then I'm gonna save the rest of those little pieces with my kit so that I can use them on another card later on if I'd like to so there we go and that's gonna finish off card number four Moving on to card number five, we're going to pull in some, uh, almost all of the neon aqua pigments in the various colors that they have. I have them all, and I'm so stoked that there's purple uh, in this kit, so I was just super excited. My favorite thing to do with it is to splatter it, so we've got a piece of black cardstock, some raven cardstock. I've trimmed this down to be, I think, four inches by five and a half inches. No, it's four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, and I'm just going to splatter because I love how those neon aqua pigments look on that dark cardstock. You can absolutely paint with it on there, but it sure looks beautiful splattered. This makes me think, you know, later 80s, early 90s. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I just, yeah, it's speaking to my childhood for sure. So I'm just going to go through the color order. We started with yellow, then we had orange. Now we have some red. Then we're going to grab the green, I believe. Yep, green. And look at how cool those look on that dark cardstock. And now obviously they're wet and they will dry back just a tiny bit, but not that much. They are so vibrant, so opaque. It is, it's incredible. And now this purple, like I can't get enough of it. And it's not like purple's my favorite color, but this stuff, like I want to paint all the things with this purple. So I've splattered like two times the amount I did with the other colors, uh, but I did that with the purple. So take a look at that. I am going to speed up the drawing process with my heat tool and then I'm going to take some pattern paper and trim that down to be the full front of an A2 size card and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment on this strip of some of the neon cardstock that came in the kit. I'm going to stamp two sentiments because I want one on the inside of the card as well and I'm going to use some of the leftover pattern paper that was trimmed off of there for the inside also. Uh, so we'll trim down those sentiments and then we'll attach our pattern paper to the front of our card base and then on the inside we're going to do the same thing just just on the edges we've got two little strips of that purple we'll attach those down and I did trim down the sides just a little bit of my neon splattered piece so I'm going to take those leftover pieces of that and attach that to the center of that purple cardstock so it really ties the front of the card to the inside of the card as well I'll grab the sentiment that says uh, you've got class <laughs> and adhere that to the inside and then I'm gonna grab a couple just, well I think it's just this one little beaker and then we're gonna pull out the little 
flying airplanes or the um, paper airplanes for the front of the card. I'll attach down my splattered panel to the front of the card base, leaving left, the left and right hand side nice and open so you can see that patterned paper. And then we're just going to use liquid glue to adhere down our sentiment as well. And then the two little paper airplanes that I had from when I cut, or I guess I didn't color these, but I did stamp them obviously and fussy cut them out. So it's a fairly simple card, but that splatter packs a punch and that is going to finish off card number five. Love how that one turned out. card number six we're going to use some deco foil transfer gel they have a different formula now uh, they have a duo now so you can use it either with your laminator or with your um, die cutting machine which is really great I just don't have that one so I'm gonna go with just this regular formula that I have for your laminator so I'm going to take this stencil and I'm going to tack that down over the top of some black cardstock if you really according to the directions if you really want the, what you're going to use to pop you'd want to use the Blanco I don't have that either so I thought I would just give it a try and I'm telling you right now it worked I thought pretty well because I used the flock the flock worked great I don't know how it would work with the enamel or any of those I would take the manufacturers instructions with that and use the Blanco but this is what it looks like when it's all dry and it's ready to be transferred. So now I'm gonna take that flock, this is the yellow flock, I'm gonna trim this down so it'll just fit the front of it because I don't wanna waste any of that flock and I'll save that for something else. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to take your copy paper and your flock and you're gonna put your flock face down onto the part where you put the duo because that's what's going to grab the flock and pull it off of the paper and then you're going to run that through your laminator <laughs> see mine kind of got a little caught the flock is a little thicker than you know normal foiling so i was having to push it through and i thought at this point you know what maybe maybe what i need to do is just invest in like a mink or something this amazon basics is very inexpensive and uh, i'll keep using it for a little while to make sure that it still works fine but you know if all else fails i may just invest in the mink but this seems to be working over here right now. So I just run that through one time and I'm gonna make sure that that is nice and cool before I pull that off. I just wanna make sure everything is nice and cool. And then I'm gonna slowly pull it away when it's, it's all ready to go. And oh my goodness, I can see how someone would get so addicted to doing this. And clearly I had some of that just down at the bottom that uh, went past the stencil. So I'm gonna end up trimming that down and that, that's fine with me. So I'll trim this panel down to be four inches by five and a quarter inches. So there'll be a nice border around this when I put this onto my A2 card base. I'm gonna cut a circle out of the center as well. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment, trying to center that up. And then I'll trim that down as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pop this up with some foam tape. And this is the black foam tape by Brutus Monroe. And this is so great when you're using such a dark cardstock like this. And I'm going to put a little bit on the back of the owl that's going to poke through the center there. So take a look at that. You're not going to see any of that foam tape from the side, which is great. So I'll adhere that down to the front of my card base, peel off the release paper on my owl, and I just made sure that I stuck to the center of the owl just to make sure that it didn't uh, overlap where he sticks over on that flocked piece. And then to make sure that my sentiment stays down, I'm going to use some quarter inch foam, uh, score tape so that way I can make sure that it stays really well to that flock. And I'll use my T ruler to make sure that everything is nice and straight. And I don't want to waste that little circle panel, so I'm going to adhere that to the inside of my card, along with a few of the other little elements that I had colored and ready to go. And then once those are all inside there, that's actually going to finish off this six card that I show you how I make it. I actually have three more cards to show you. Just I'm just going to show you what they look like. I made them off camera. But here is number six. I love that flock. I can see how people get addicted to that. It's just so neat. And then let's take a look at number six, uh, seven. This one was just a Copic colored foilable panel. For number eight, I used the pink flock, and I love how that one turned out as well. 
And for our ninth card, we did more stamping. We even added some of the stickers from the kit. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the cards that I did make for you today. I would love to know which one you liked best. If you did have a favorite, go ahead and leave that down in the comment section down below. As I've said a million times, that's like my favorite part of making all these is just hearing which ones you guys like best. I will tell you this kit is still available, but some of the pieces are available very separately as well. You can get the stamp sets separately. There's also some other pieces, the pattern paper. Um, so I'll have all those linked down below if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, yeah, and go ahead and hit that like button if you liked this video, and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. I typically have three to four videos a week, and I'm always happy to have you guys coming by. Thanks for all the love and support you guys leave, all the thumbs upping, the commenting, the liking, subscribing, um, and also using my affiliate links. That helps a great deal. So thank you guys so much. I will see you very soon in another video. Bye, everybody.